Hi guys. Imagine that. It is another gray, gloomy, yuck, depressing day here in the end times. Here at the laundromat where I am back again at the fucking laundromat. Uh, I can swear I bought a washer and dryer more than two weeks ago. Anyway, for whatever reason, I am back at the laundromat washing sheets for the incoming Airbnbers uh, heading my way this weekend here on this gloomy Friday, uh, September 17th, 2021. So that eek little eco pussy Sam Mitchell just finished his Manga Bay ecological meltdown roundup rant over there at Collapse Chronicles. You can find that. But as long as I've got a uh, what is it? 24 minutes to kill. Uh, I just want to... Uh, I've told this story before, but I just think it's an interesting story. So before I get into this, I just need to uh, play, I, I, I don't know, guys, a little bit of referee. Uh, you, you know, I, of course, as I always do, whenever I do a, uh, you know, a vegan rant, a, a self-righteous, holier-than-thou uh, vegan rant. Uh, <laughs> obviously, guys, I'm trying to stir up shit. That's what I do. But I, I just want to make it clear for the record. If anybody uh, reading any comments uh, to, that, to that rant yesterday, I think about a hundred people on the planet, I, d I just want to state clearly for the record that both Mark J and WRW, whenever I do a self-righteous, uh, holier-than-thou vegan rant, I am not talking about either Mark J or, uh, or WRW. I have known both of these men for years. I have spent time with them in their homes. Uh, I have absolutely nothing but respect for them. And j just to be clear, guys, I I have plenty of vegan friends. You know, my sister is a vegan, for God's sake. I have no problem with vegans. I And I want to make it clear for the record that I recommend uh, people be vegans. I have said it before, and I will say it again. Uh, I said it yesterday. The number, well, there's two reasons I'm that I'm not a vegan, is that my fellow Earthlings taste too damn good, and that I am clearly not as spiritually evolved as uh, Mark J or WRW or my sister or Andy the Gardener or anyone else uh, who has chosen not to eat our fellow earthlings. I have nothing but respect uh, for uh, everyone on that list I just mentioned. Uh, give yourself a pat on the back. Uh, it is the righteous decision to stop eating our, our fellow earthlings. So with that in the in the background, um, I, I couldn't help but have a little bit of good-natured fun, and I I think that Mark realizes, you know, when I was talking, we were he he brought up the subject of pigs. Uh, and, and, and this is, ab and so Mark, I'm, I'm not trying to stir up shit with you. I've just, I have told this story before. I just think it's an interesting story. And I would like to hear your, your remarks to this story. Um, and this, it, it involves cannibalism in pigs. And there's actually quite a bit of information on cannibalism in pigs, it is well recorded that uh, pigs uh, they they commonly they bite off the tails and the ears of their fellow pigs. You know, in the packs that they run around with, mother pigs cannibalizing their own babies. Uh, that is uh, it, that's called savaging. 
uh, mother pigs eating their own babies. Uh, there's all sorts. Here is one uh, from Quora when I was trying to look up uh, uh, examples of pig cannibalism uh, where this farmer said, uh, to be a bit more graphic, I have seen where a farmer had to revert to shooting a pig in a pasture because it could not be herded and the other pigs would go up and taste the blood while the animal, you know, that was just shot is still in its death throes. Uh, you know, talking about the, you know, the other pigs in this pig's own, uh, own herd. And the, so the story that I, that, that I like to, that I've, I've, I've told this story, um, before, but I'm just going to repeat it. So I was living down in, uh, this village, this little village in Ecuador, renting this place in Ecuador, uh, about a block away from this farmer who had a small pig operation. So he certainly was not one of these big factory farms. The pigs actually had free reign uh, of the area. They were not even pinned. It was not some godforsaken hellhole third world pig farm. The, the pigs had a pretty good life. But what would happen, so uh, every weekend, you, you know, they 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 had a pig roast basically and so what happened is every saturday morning this farmer would choose an unlucky pig to uh you, you know to be butchered and they would cook the pig all day saturday and serve him up on sunday and full disclosure, I was looking forward to Sunday as much as anybody else. I I enjoyed eating this pig, uh, whoever the unlucky pig was, every Sunday. But Saturday, every Saturday morning, how I got woken up was the screaming from the pigs just down the block. Uh, you know, it, it would. There, there, there's two. There were two separate noises that I would hear, uh, although I never went down to investigate. There was first, you, you, it was damn clear when the pig was being murdered by the farmer. I, I, I didn't hear a gunshot. I never heard, heard a gunshot. This was what woke me up uh, every Saturday morning. I'm assuming what he was doing was slitting the unlucky pig's throat is probably so. I, I got to hear the initial screaming, terrified screaming of one pig, uh, which was which was an ugly sound, but not ugly enough apparently to keep me from eating the pig uh, the next day. But what would happen after that? You know, a few minutes after there would be a second round. Of screaming, you know, screaming and squealing and uh, grunting, you know, where where you heard a bunch of pigs sounding like they were freaking out, and, and I immediately jumped to the conclusion what this was, uh, in the this chorus. Uh, uh, of squealing and screaming by these other pigs, I automatically jumped to the conclusion what it was is, is that the other pigs were freaking out that they were getting ready to be killed. They were, they were, they were freaking out that one of their fellow members, probably their own brothers, sisters, children, parents, cousins, whoever it was, but these pigs that they had spent the night with Friday night. I just assumed that, it, that you know, I was anthropomorphizing. Uh, I, I would just automatically jump to the conclusion that obviously the other pigs were freaked out and in distress over this. I, I never checked this out. I just 
just went away with that assumption that witnessing one of their own family members having their throat slit freaked out the other pigs. Well, it was right about that time. It, it, uh, soon after I left there, I, I found this book at the, uh, I, I was at the South American Explorers Club Library in Cusco, Peru, and I found this book. They have a lot of these travel logs about where usually Americans or Europeans, you know, traveling around Latin America. And I cannot remember the name of this book. I think it might have had the word equator in it, but I cannot find this book because I would love to read this passage in this book. It is the one passage that, it's an excellent book. I'm so sorry I can't remember it. If anybody by any miracle can help me find this book. So anyway, here, here's how the story went down. This dude's story, who was some bleeding heart, little lefty, uh, gringo traveler. It was a white male American traveling around as I was uh, in Latin America, you know, going, living in these little villages like I was and everything. Now, I cannot remember if the author was a vegan or not. I do not know if this man was a vegan or a carnivore or not. Alright, so... I can't give you that information, but but anyway, uh, he he clearly uh, d d understood uh, that it's probably not cool to eat our fellow Earthlings. So he had an experience almost identical to mine in some little Latin American village. Pretty, maybe it was the same farmer. I don't know. Well, no, it wasn't that because uh, obviously he named the village. I can't remember the village or even the country, but, but you know what I'm saying. The, the same situation that I was in where every week uh, the farmer would go out, pick out a pig. He would hear the pig get murdered. Uh, he would hear all of this screaming from the other pigs, exactly what I went through. And uh, so it, 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 he, he just finally couldn't tolerate it anymore. And he decided he was going to take it upon himself to go down there and, and, and talk to the, this, you know, this farmer uh, doing their cultural thing. You know, the culture, this is very common in Latin America where they kill a pig in the village usually on Saturday morning and have a big uh, pig roast on Sunday. Uh, so anyway, he would finally had enough of it. So he was going to uh, put an end to this, I guess. Uh, uh, yeah, they, they would have had a gringo roast. So he gets all self-righteous and he just can't stand it anymore. So, uh, <clears throat> I'm assuming that Saturday morning or whatever, he marches down to the pig farmer's place, you know, to confront the guy that, uh, you know, this isn't cool, at least to the other pigs. And here is what this little bleeding heart, uh, th this little uh, bleeding heart saw this is what was happening, and this is exactly what was happening in the village where I was, and is, and is happening in Latin American villages all over. Uh, my guess is tomorrow morning this will be happening dozens if not hundreds of times, is that the farmer went out there and picked out one pig. So, I, I, I still agree with the guy that every pig in that herd knew that somebody was getting ready to be killed. Okay, and so uh, the farmer grabbed the pig and slit his throat. And of course, the pig, the, the unlucky pig who, who got caught, probably the slowest pig is my guess, probably the slowest pig uh, is the one who got caught by the farmer. 
and, and of course that pig uh, was screaming in agony and whatever, but what that set off in all of the other pigs, they all started screaming and squealing, but it was not exactly the same scream. What they were doing is after they saw that they were not the one to be killed, that it was just, uh, you know, Uncle Joe or Mommy or, uh, or, or, my, or my brother or sister uh, who was the unlucky pig this week, what they were screaming about is they wanted a piece of the action. The action in this case being so what the farmer would do is, is he would kill the pig and all of the other pigs squealing in anticipation, he would gut the pig and, and all the parts, whatever parts that uh, weren't going to be eaten, uh, all of the various guts that weren't going into the pig roast, they, the, the, the farmer was reaching in and throwing the fresh, warm guts from the recently, well, you know, within minutes, the, the, the pig might not have even been totally dead yet, and all of his family members were in absolute having an orgy of excitement, not because they were freaking out, running away from the, running away from the dead pig, they were running toward the farmer and the dead pig because they wanted, uh, y y you know, uh, a piece of liver or kidney or whatever. It, it was a mass orgy of, uh, of pig cannibalism. That is what all of those, quote, what he had interpret interpreted as terrified screaming, it was uh, a, a celebratory screaming. And uh, and so that you know the guy sheepishly went away with with a whole new view of uh, of at least uh, of at least that. And uh, I am not saying this to stir up shit uh, with Mark J or in, in, uh, or any other vegan. I'm just uh, pointing out uh, that. Things are not always what they seem to be, uh, and that we need to be careful about anthropomorphizing. Um, now, I'm expecting that Mark will say, Hambone, again, your argument is pathetic. You know, for these little small time, small town pig farmers, uh, you can put a little asterisk, but these giant uh, industrial grade uh, slaughterhouses, every damn pig knows that when he goes into a slaughterhouse and sees one or two of his buddies uh, getting murdered, uh, that he ain't leaving that slaughterhouse with a full belly. And, and I fully understand this, Mark. Uh, I do agree that the pigs in these industrial level uh, slaughterhouses uh, do get it, uh, that they're getting ready to uh, get the bullet or the club or the razor blade. So uh, I just thought that was an interesting story because it does illustrate things are not always like they seem. Anyway, uh, that's all. I just wanted to share that story. Uh, in no way, shape, or form does it uh, make the BLT I'm getting ready to eat, uh, which I assure you came from a factory farm. I, am sh I assure you that the pig I am getting ready to eat within the next hour uh, was not a humanely raised uh, 
whatever they call that, non-CAFO running free pig in some little village in Ecuador who had a pretty damn good life uh, right up to the minute he got killed. Uh, I'm not pretending for one minute uh, that, the be that the pig m making my lunch was that. I understand that uh, my that the taste of this bacon trumps my moral outrage at the life and death that this pig suffered. And I'm getting ready to hit 62 years old in five days. Maybe I will come around and my moral outrage uh, will eclipse the taste of bacon. We shall see. I need to go uh, get some sheets out of the dryer so I can get home and start frying up some bacon. Get out there and uh, either enjoy your moral outrage or your BLT, depending on which one floats your boat while you still can. Bye, guys.